Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy and today I want to talk to you about Clipper and Raspberry Pis. Well, I should say the lack of Raspberry Pis with Clipper. As many of you know, if you've tried to install Clipper on your 3D printer, Raspberry Pis are very, very scarce and if you do find one, they're very, very expensive. I've bought five different models of Raspberry Pi alternatives that you can use. They're all under $50. I'll give you the pros and cons of each one of them and hopefully that'll let you make a more educated decision. Well, here are the five different models. I've got an Orange Pi 3 LTS, a Big Tree Tech Pi 4B CB1 combination. This is actually two pieces. I'll talk about this in a little bit. I've got a MakerBase MKS Pi, an Orange Pi 02, and a Radsa Zero. And I'll leave links down in the description where you can find out the pricing for all these and where to get them. This is the Orange Pi 3 LTS. It's got a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor. These are all ARM boards, I should mention. It's got a USB 2, a 1 gigahertz Ethernet, two USB 3s. I've got an audio jack. I've got a full size HDMI. Around the back here, I do have a reset button. Underneath, there is a place for a um, micro SD card, USB C, your GPIO pins. This does have an external antenna. This does have Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. A couple things about this board. First of all, if you want to power this board up, you've got to use the USB C port here or the GPIO pins here. Just put 5 volts on those either with a buck converter or a 5 volt power supply if you like. I mentioned before that there's two USB uh, 3 and a USB 2 here. There's no camera input on this anywhere or a display. The only thing it's got is an HDMI out here. So if you want to hook up a touch screen to this, you've got to hook up the HDMI out here and the USB here. You've got to have a USB going to your main board of the printer. And then if you want a camera, you've got to use this USB port here. So all this stuff fills up very, very quickly and there's not a lot of I.O. on it. Now you can do a couple other things. It does have UART, so you can hook this up directly to the main board uh, through the GPIO pins if you like, instead of using the USB 3 or the USB 2. Really depends on what you want to do. Next up is the Big Tree Tech Pi 4B adapter with the CB1. This CB1 is very similar to a control module 4 in the Raspberry Pi. And the reason they broke this up like that is they also have some new main boards that you can get that all you need to do is put this on the main board, the CB1 adapter, and that'll give you a Raspberry Pi built into the main board. So you're basically getting two pieces here, but it's kind of cool. So this has a quad core processor also. It runs at 1.5 gigahertz. Um, you do have Wi-Fi on it. I just want to go around the board and explain what it has on as far as input outputs. You do have a one gigabyte ethernet connector. You've got four USB 2.0 ports. You've got an HDMI here and an HDMI here to give you two HDMI outputs. You've also got a USB-C here. On the back here, there's also separate five volt power, which is kind of nice. Now you've got 40 GPIO pins here that are the exact same pinout as they are on a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4. This does have the standard 15 pin flat ribbon cable for the Pi cameras. And on the back, it's also got the DSI output for the digital displays, which is very nice. So this is a full featured board. I really, really like this board. It's got everything you need on it for a full clipper installation and all your peripherals hooked up to it. I should also mention that this is the same configuration and format as a Raspberry Pi 4. So any Raspberry Pi 4 cases that are out there, you can print it out and this will fit in it. Now this is the MakerBase MKS Pi. This is a pretty interesting little board. Fully self-contained, I'm going to go around here and tell you what the input outputs are. You've got a USB 3, 2 USB 2, gigabit Ethernet, eMMC, full-size HDMI, USB-C. It does have a reset button. This is for the display. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. 
Another interesting thing, this is the power input for it. It can hook up to either 12 or 24 volts, which is pretty cool, especially if you're going to put this obviously inside your, uh, with your control board and your current power supply. And here are the I.O. for it, uh, the GPIO pins for it. I want to talk about this connector. Now this is for the display. If you want to hook up clipper screen to this, this has a 24 pin flat cable for it, which is kind of weird. So it only hooks up with this, which is their MKS Pi TS35. Now I bought this with that screen for less than $50, which was pretty good price considering it comes with the screen. The screen is pretty small though. My big fat fingers can't really touch a lot of it, but it does work well. Uh, again, with the Wi-Fi not being on board, you've got to hook up to one of the USB connectors. So you are going to lose a connector there. So if you want to hook up, let's say, a camera, your printer, and of the, the Wi-Fi to it, that's going to take all your USB ports. There is nothing on the back here for a camera. So you're kind of stuck there. This is the same format as a Raspberry Pi 3, so any cases out there, this will fit in. I really like this board. Um, it's very well supported by MakerBase. It does work really well. But I just wish it had one more USB input on it, and I wish that this connector was uh, the, the standard 15-pin flat cable that both the Big Tree Tech and the Raspberry Pi use, and it had a camera connector, which it doesn't have. Now this is the Orange Pi Zero 2. This is a neat little board. It's very inexpensive, very accessible. Let me tell you about the things it does have on it, and then I'll tell you about the things it doesn't have that makes me not want to really recommend this board for some users. You do have a one gigabit ethernet port. You do have a USB-C. This is your power. You've got a micro HDMI port. You've also got a USB 2.0 port. These are your GPIO pins. Right here is an external antenna for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. These GPIO pins right here are extra USB 2.0 ports. You might need those. So when you hook this up to your machine, you've basically got one USB 2.0 port here to hook up to that. There's no camera inputs on this. There's no uh, place to hook up a, a display on it for clipper screen. So it's kind of limited. But as a bare bones system, it's very fast, very powerful and it works really, really well for Clipper. This is the Radza Zero. This is a pretty cool board. This is the exact same form factor and size as the Raspberry Pi Zero and Zero 2W. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's got two USB-C connectors. This one can be used for power, but if you don't use it for power, and let's say use the GPIO pins to power it up, you can hook up a, an OTG adapter to this, and let's say hook up your, your camera to it, and then use this to hook up to the main board, which is pretty cool. You do have a micro HDMI port here, and the GPIO pins are exactly the same as they are on a Raspberry Pi Zero. This board is really well supported. Like the other boards, it does have a quad core ARM chip on it, so it's very, very powerful, more than enough for Clipper. And uh, this is a nice little board. Very inexpensive and, uh, again, very accessible. Now, in regards to installing Clipper on these boards, they're all very, very similar. For the two Orange Pi boards, if you go to their website, they have links where you can download the operating systems. You simply install the operating systems on here like you would any other Raspberry Pi. You burn it on a TFT card using Blue Etcher or the Raspberry Pi Imager. You install the operating system, you set your Wi-Fi on it so you can actually hook up to it or you use the Ethernet connector, update everything, and then you can install Clipper on them. You can also install the Clipper install and update helper, K-I-A-U-H. Very, very easy to install Clipper on here, create the firmware, put it on your board, and you're pretty much ready to go. The RADSA is the same thing. 
You simply download the software, install the operating system, and then Clipper. Exact same as the Orange, Orange Pi units. Now the MakerBase is kind of interesting. It came with a TFT card, and it was already installed with everything. Clipper, um, KIAUH, Mainsail, Clipper Screen, it was all there, ready to go. The only thing you need to do was create the firmware to install on your main board. The big tree tech is almost as simple as this. In some ways, it's simpler. If you go to their GitHub page, there's a file on there, the software you can download, you burn it on there, everything is installed. All you need to do is change your Wi-Fi information. If you have a big tree tech board, they also have the firmware there ready to go for both USB and UART. So all you need to do is download that, burn it in on your, on your main board, and it's ready to rock and roll. Very easy to install. Now I'm gonna be leaving links to all their information down in the description below so you can take a look at all that before you make your own decision on which board you're gonna get. Bottom line is all these boards are good. They're all very inexpensive and all very accessible. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick the Big Tree Tech. Very easy to install for beginners and advanced users. Uh, it's got all the inputs and outputs I could possibly want. It's built especially for Clipper, so that's pretty nice. If I had a runner-up, believe it or not, I'd probably pick this little Radza. Uh, I do a lot of other things with Raspberry Pis, and this has got a great form factor. It's got all the features that the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 has. Plus, I can actually get it, so I like that. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and as always, like, share, and subscribe. I've got to get that in there. We'll see you later.